If you grew up in Texas, you may already be familiar with the northern bobwhite quail. You can find their grassland habitat simply by driving a couple hours outside of Denton. And if you go there in the spring, you may also hear the call that gives the species its name. Bob whites are ecologically important, both as a prey item and as an indicator of environmental health. They're also economically important, as quail hunting is a huge industry with many devoted followers. Bob whites are also in trouble, because for many decades their populations have been in decline, and no one really understands exactly why. One possible explanation is the advent of a new class of insecticides called the neonicotinoids. Now, these are chemicals that are engineered to be toxic only to insects, but there is mounting evidence that they are impacting wildlife as well. Quail that ingest seeds or insects coated in neonicotinoids may suffer toxic effects themselves or pass that contamination onto their eggs and offspring. For my research, I wanted to see the effects of neonicotinoid exposure on quail embryo development, and so I formulated three objectives. First, I wanted to see how the size of the embryos and the size of their organs may be affected. Next, I wanted to see if the rate of anatomical deformities was higher in exposed embryos. And finally, I needed to find out if there were critical windows of development, or specific periods in the growth of the embryo when exposure is more likely to cause detrimental effects. To investigate my objectives, I injected bobwhite eggs with five concentrations of a neonicotinoid insecticide during five periods of development, for a total of 25 treatments. Near the end of incubation, my embryos were euthanized and then examined. I measured the mass of the embryo itself, as well as the mass of the heart, the liver, the lungs, and the kidneys, and I also took note of any deformities. What I found is that the effects of exposure depend largely on when that exposure occurs. For example, embryos that were exposed at the start of incubation tended to produce abnormal organs, such as enlarged hearts, livers, and kidneys, as well as smaller lungs. However, when exposure occurred a bit later, during a time when the embryo's body and limbs were starting to take shape, then deformities of the beak and the legs were more common. It seemed then that early incubation was a critical window affecting organogenesis, whereas skeletal structures were more affected at a later period. My results carry startling implications for wild bobwhite quail. If exposed chicks are subject to altered organs and higher rates of deformities, then their hatching success, as well as their survival, is likely to be affected. Now, more work is needed to determine the extent of neonicotinoids' effects in the field, but my results imply that they are one potential contributing factor to declining bobwhite populations. Thank you very much for your time.